So after doing cove cuts in my last video, in the comments section there, a lot of people said they were kind of afraid to do this, or they felt it was dangerous, or they'd never tried it. And it actually is really easy, and I reckon the most critical part of the process is getting that jig right, that, that jig with the fences, that kind of closes in on the workpiece. And I thought I'd do a little bit of a deep dive today about how to make that jig so that it works for safe and easy cove cuts. To start off you need two pieces of wood which will become the fences and they need to be identical in width. These two pieces here are slightly different. I'm going to have to take these over to the table saw and just rip this one down to make it exactly the same width as the other one. The next thing we need is a couple of swing arms, and I've just cut these out of scraps of 12mm plywood. And it's important too that they're the same length, same width. I want my jig to be about this wide because I'm going to be making these soap dishes with it. And I'll probably just cut off the excess length of the swing arms. This next step is really important because in some circumstances it can be okay to put your hardwood into a tight confined space that gets narrower the further it goes in. This isn't one of those situations. We need these two fences to be as parallel as the universe we live in now with COVID-19 and the universe that exists without COVID-19. So that's why it's important that we mark dead center of these fences and dead center of these arms before we drill our holes. So now, as a result of having the holes drilled accurately and consistently on each piece of material, we have a parallelogram thingy that closes up very accurately. And that's going to mean that the wood, when you slide it across the blade, is not going to bind at any point along the cut. It's kind of almost exactly in many ways similar to this one.
So once you have your jig set up and you're ready to make the cut, I think the really important thing to stress is that you just take tiny little bites at a time, multiple, multiple passes, and just raise the blade a little bit each time. That should get you through. And I have a couple of examples here to show you where I went too heavy in one pass and that uh, caused a lot of smoke to come out, a lot of burning. You don't want that blade deflecting too much. I've never tried it, but I wouldn't recommend using a thin kerf blade. I, mm, um, but yeah, just take little, tiny little nibbles and go through again and again and again and you'll get there. So this is what I realized about a week later when I came back to do this job uh, on more soap dishes that I don't even really need this thing because these little clamp thingies here onto the motor slots they clamp down so securely that these fences really just never move and all that's important is that the workpiece can slide up along the middle of these fences just nice and smoothly so Okay, so now I just have to tidy up the sides and get them even so that the cove is in the middle of the uh, of the workpiece overall. So then when I run the grooves down the middle and on the sides with a the router, then they'll be balanced from side to side. Got a channel recommendation for you. Cuffy's Woodwork has created a second channel called Cuffy's Woodwork Tips and Talk. This is a channel dedicated to very fine details and technicalities of fine woodworking. Really good news for anyone like myself who's looking to up their game, up their knowledge level on, on the actual, real, proper woodworking. So he's got one video up at the moment about uh, grain direction. Um, really, really good stuff. Looking forward to this channel.